and you know i get this question i uh, i'm asked this question quite a bit that you know wasn't it a risk to come back to india leaving a you know couple hundred thousand dollar job package with uh, uh, with microsoft and coming back to india and doing something of your own but i look at it very differently i mean i think risk would have been the fact that had i continued with microsoft because then i would be literally doing something where my you know uh, doing something day in and day out where my heart was not there so it would have been a very suffocating experience for me hi my name is tarun i am the founder and ceo of avishkar today i am here at backstage with millionaires and i'm going to walk you through my journey of entrepreneurship with avishkar my entrepreneurial journey dates back to the time when i was in grade 9 i was a very good hands on worker i always wanted to do things with my hands uh, you know in fact throughout the academic year the best time was the one when i used to be part of science exhibitions so there i was talking to my science teacher that i wanted to make a robot and can you she help me with identifying the resources but uh, you know as is common in the indian education system so what happens is you know if you want to do something new you kind of ridiculed so she made me stand in front of the class and asked here's mr bhalla he's going to make a robot everyone laugh and everyone you know give him a big round of applause so that was a experience which uh, didn't go too well with me but the environment at home was very liberating very uh, you know fantastic for me my parents uh, not out of uh, you know any uh, pedigree or something they were by nature very liberal so they never pressurized me to pick up any particular subject or why did you not get good marks in any xyz subject rather the uh, environment they provided to me was do whatever you feel is right for you so they were at a very early age knowingly unknowingly giving me an option to design my education so as an example to that you know i had options to pick and choose what i wanted to do in my summers so i got a chance to pick that i would go and intern at intern at my father's factory so when i did something like that at a very young age when i was in grade 10 i was already maintaining accounts of the factory i was already doing procurement for different uh, uh, departments of the factory and not only that that also exposed me to different kind of machinery that is used in a factory i was adept at using a drill machine a grinder a punching machine a lathe machine even before you know uh, i think most of my classmates did it did that in mechanical engineering but i was able to do it at a very young age and that literally you know cemented my psyche or you know my world view that if you want to do something you go out and make it happen and you don't wait for an instruction manual or a, for a book or for a degree to pursue what you want to pursue so my school education or my school time was fantastic you know i was not under any pressure but literally it was the college time which counterintuitively was a little bit more suffocating than my school timing and why i say that so despite the fact that i got admission into one of the top universities of the country uh, i was presented four years which were not stimulating at all in fact you know we could not choose what we wanted to study everything was uh, uh, you know recipe based that if you have to be an engineer these are five subjects that you study uh, for me that was not really exciting in fact what i would do you know again here i did uh, break certain rules uh, in a sense you know of a normal upbringing or normal engineer graduating where i would finish up my courses in record time but most of the time i would spend in extracurricular activities which meant i was organizing college festivals i was in you know, organizing technical festivals i learned about people mobilization during my college days i learned about multitasking during my college days and this for the fact that you know i was organizing so many competitions and so many uh, festivals i was always uh, selling one kind of sponsorship or one kind of event to a sponsor or another kind of event to another sponsor i learned those school skills in college so i would recommend any entrepreneur i mean to you know literally anyone who has entrepreneurial dreams to do pursue that kind of experience where you are just not working in front of a computer or you're just not attending lectures in college you should be you know networking interacting with other people from your college of course towards a common go- cause and goal and uh, you know by the side uh, also doing a lot of other gigs which may not be related to your academics for me personally that has been really a defining factor it has helped me tremendously as an entrepreneur
So as soon as I, you know, completed my college, I moved on to my first job, my first gig as a software engineer, as a research and design engineer in a very, uh, very interesting and exciting firm. It was a startup way ahead of its time where we were trying to do things which were not heard of in India, whether it is VoIP or multi-application switch server. It was a fantastic company to work with, very challenging as far as technology was concerned. And to be honest, again, what I learned here was interesting stuff and why I say interesting is because I learned what not to do as a startup so first thing first this company was hugely funded they had 50 million dollars to make a multi application switch server we were a team of 90 people based out of India and 20 people based out of US uh, the founder and the promoter was not in India so that's mistake number one if you are making something your vision has to be communicated to each and every employee or each and every member of the team that was the first mistake they made I had no idea what we were making I was actually making a command line interface which is like the first thing any consumer would open up I had no guidelines I didn't know who my audience was whom I making something so I was almost making something in an island lesson number two I learned was you know uh, there was senior management which was based out of India they were kind of you know a bit loose on uh, you know ensuring that uh, money is used on the right places so that's another mistake that you know because of the fact that the founder was sitting out in US uh, those kind of financial uh, discipline uh, was not maintained in this uh, in this enterprise so that was again lesson number two you know make every penny count for something right and third thing is you know you just cannot expect people uh, to uh, to be focused and to be focused towards a common goal if you are not communicating to them on a regular basis so that was the third lesson I learned in that enterprise. So my first uh, uh, startup or the first startup that I worked for, worked for was I actually got paid uh, to learn from someone else's mistakes. You know, it was very clear to me that my first job was not something that I would like to pursue or do as a career. So I knew that I wanted to have a lot of skill sets uh, in me before I could start as an entrepreneur. Uh, this learning had dawned upon me in my first job itself. So what I did was I decided what place to go to learn entrepreneurship, what degree to pursue, if there is a degree, if there is something like a degree. And I chose, uh, you know, Seattle as a place to go and, uh, you know, pursue further education. And education specifically because I was aware that America does provide you that option of designing and deciding what you want to study. And they had this fantastic course in entrepreneurship. So I, you know, I decided that I would like to pursue a master's in entrepreneurial management from University of Washington in Seattle. I mean, my, my, uh, my master's experience was fantastic. I was busy all the time time I was busy either working for companies or dissecting different case studies and it was a very thorough fulfilling experience for me um, and I did get a job with Microsoft right after my uh, graduation I worked there for a year but to be honest uh, you know this uh, itch of entrepreneurship was there from the beginning and I just realized that I am not cut out for corporate world so I could have you know pursued it couple more years learned few more skills but I realized that you know that's not my calling in life so what's the point of fooling oneself and you know I get this question I uh, I'm asked this question quite a bit that you know wasn't it a risk to come back to India leaving a you know couple hundred thousand dollar job package with uh, uh, with Microsoft and coming back to India and doing something of your own but I look at it very differently I mean I think risk would have been the fact that had I continued with Microsoft because then I would be literally doing something where my, you know, uh, doing something day in and day out where my heart was not there. So it would have been a very suffocating experience for me. So I was very clear. Uh, I have had a good run with Microsoft, I had a great run with University of Washington and it was time to get my hands dirty and into the uh, into the crucible of entrepreneurship uh, but I wanted a break before that so I took a couple of years off I traveled across the world uh, both in India whole uh, across India and in Europe as well so I like this quote from Motorcycle Diaries which is uh, Che Guevara's uh, autobiography uh, you know he says that let the world change you so that you can change the world so my travels across India travels across Europe and America had definitely changed me for the good so it was my time to now get back and change the world in my own way. So Avishkar was born in 2010 after you know two years of travel when I had come back. I started off as a single man army 
and i am proud of the fact that i did the way things should be done i believe in the in the right context i have seen a lot of entrepreneurs or new entrepreneurs spend a disproportionate amount of time going to conferences uh, you know do, doing different kind of entrepreneurial talks i am not trying to deny the value of those talks and conferences but if you want to start a business if you want to be an entrepreneur if you want to make an impact you have to be on the ground and you have to make the impact yourself you should not wait for a godfather to come in and hand over a check to you i would rather spend that time and effort and money to identify you know different kind of uh, customers and pilot my project and that's what i did so in 2010 i decided that i wanted to you know since as i mentioned i wanted to be to create a makers platform where essentially you know we have different product services ecosystem for promoting you know promoting making amongst kids so the path i chose was uh, was to go out in schools and do workshops you know for 20 kids for 30 kids in the beginning understand how schools are evaluating those workshops understanding how kids actually perform in those workshops whatever the learning outcomes we are trying to create are those possible or not so that's what i started off in 2010 uh, and it was fantastic you know as i mentioned i was a single man army i used to call this as p2p i am the p2p of the company so when i say p2p it means beyond to president so that means if someone comes to office i am there to serve them water but if uh, the interaction has to be taken at a visionary level or at a strategy level i am there to answer those question also and i feel that experience has made me more humble the people who work at different levels in my company now we have a 100 or team uh, i understand what each and every role and function is and what's the importance of that role and function is and that's the reason you know that doing that work in a short span of time myself uh, i can empathize with them and that has also allowed us to have a very very low attrition rate in the company that we are building so once the initial euphoria of starting up the company had died and the reality of running a business dawned upon me so you know if uh, i had to give an analogy like in cricket you have middle overs when you trend when you tend to uh, you know you have you tend to lose focus and you tend to kind of give in to the uh, overwhelming odds of winning a match or preparing a score you you tend to you know lead 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 astray so that's a time when i learned a lot of lessons the real lessons of entrepreneurship was learned during that time uh, so lesson number 1 that i learned was uh, you know the value of focus for instance it's very easy when you know your initial some revenues have started to come in and your initial business model with some tweaking has been proved and you are getting you know free cash into the business so what do you do you know typically i have seen a lot of people actually digress from the main business problem at that point of time and start up new uh, related focus area related areas which can be you know a case can be made that these are related areas but they tend to lose focus so that's one thing which i learned and you know as steve jobs used to say that the focus is all about saying no so we luckily were you know out of i would say mostly good fortune we were able to say no to things we were only focusing on educational robotics it was very you know very easy for us or very tempting when people would come and say you know can you do something for me a small project for me in industrial robotics or can you do a small project for me in uh, uh, medical robotics but we actually said no so we were you know we stuck our guns to uh, educational robotics creating a maker space in school creating robotics labs in schools so we very focused on that that was learning number 1 the second lesson that i learned in this so called middle over space of my business was that of uh, the value of building of strong culture so i really like this quote uh, which has been quoted quite often is culture is that invisible founder of your business so culture is something that takes care of a business when you are out there to do sales and when you're not in office what is the you know i was a single founder so what uh, was being done in office i had no idea but so you know from the very beginning there were a few values that as a team we decided upon and uh, which is part of building a culture and you know something that i would always follow i would uh, always ensure that others also follow followed and mostly through leading by example so you know the culture part i would say is something which is uh, often uh, not seen where you say okay i'm going to build a great culture when the company becomes uh, this many millions or this many old this many years old but that doesn't happen you have to build the culture every day 
each and every action that you take whether knowingly or unknowingly is contributing in building a culture so you have to be very cognizant and always be aware of it uh, the third learning i've had in during those crucial uh, phases of the business uh, was uh, uh, the idea that you don't build businesses for fashion or for labels see it's very common these days to have certain terms being circulated around right now AI startups are in demand or big data startups are in demand or cab booking services are in demand. See, everything goes up and down. I mean, you know, what becomes in demand, I have seen during those, you know, during the last 10 years of entrepreneurial journey, quite a few time, a tech space was very hot. Then a tech space was not required. And then a tech space was a complete, uh, uh, you know, waste. And now uh, the flavor of season is ed tech is hot again. Uh, but literally speaking, I mean, honestly, you know, if I had to build the business to please a certain set of investors or a certain set of media or a certain set of society, then I don't think you will be able to build any business anytime. I mean, Steve Jobs, you know, did mention this thing that, you know, it's very easy to start up. But what is difficult is if you can stick it out or not. So I think with a lot of new entrepreneurs, that is also a problem. Uh, I have seen people start a company, shut it down, start another company, shut it down and do it again and again and again. But if you ask me, you have to always go back and remember why you started something. What was the impact you were looking at? And if you remember that, then your journey or your persistence would always be there. You would persevere to build your startup to that fantastic organization that you wanted to build in the first place. The fourth learning uh, I have had is more of a learning by accident than anything that I had planned for or anything I was thinking about. Uh, in my leadership team, we have around, uh, you know, we have around 12 different disciplines of the business. Uh, different teams that are working uh, out of 12, te 12 people you know we had a majority 70 percent as women so women leaders having a women leaders in startups and entrepreneurs or in uh, having women leaders in startups is fantastic i mean what i have realized from my learning here in india is women tend to be a little more sincere they tend to be diligent they're far better at multitasking if you compare it to men so i am a big gung-ho and promoter of higher women in leadership positions in your company and also the fact that i'm you know proud father of two daughters so <laughs> that also chips in in the end i would like to summarize that uh, my journey has been fantastic i would not trade it for anything else i know i have had quite a few hits and uh, quite a few misses but I all the misses if were not really misses those were not failures they were the lessons for me um, i would not barter it for anything you know where else would you get a chance to build a company worth 15 crores of revenue coming in from zero revenue or where else will you get a chance to uh, build a company from zero employees or one employee 220 employees that we have right now where else would you get a chance to build something which is sold in every part of the country so all 29 states we have presence now or where else would you get a chance to make something in india and sell to the world we are also selling make in india products in china apart from 12 different countries across the world where else will you get a chance to make an impact in the lives of 200,000 kids who will hopefully end up becoming makers and entrepreneurs when they grow up? And honestly, I would like to end with a simple quote. A lot of people would come back to you and say that it's going to be very risky to start something of your own. But if you think deeply enough, you know, what is more riskier is not doing something where your heart is not there. So this was my journey from a curious maker who was once laughed upon on the idea of making robots, but who ended up creating India's biggest educational robotics company, Avishkar. I hope you enjoyed watching this video and I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have if you leave them in the comment section. And finally, I believe my story has lessons for everyone and anyone who will be interested in entrepreneurship. So I would request you to share this video with any friends of yours whom you feel will pursue entrepreneurship. Thank you. Have a great day.